Hello and welcome everyone to episode 22 of One Piece at a Time, the One Piece read-through podcast where we read and discuss five chapters of the One Piece manga each and every week. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host and freelance letterer at Shonen Jump, Brandon Bovia. How are you doing, Brandon? Doing pretty good. Uh, of course, um, as <laughs> the listeners know by this point, um, the English letterer for manga like Dragon Ball Super and Kaijin number 8 and dozens Literally dozens more. <laughs> <laughs> so many more. Uh, you were telling me about your workload, and it's... Um, things, I would, I would say it kind right of puts mine to shame in, in some cases. <laughs> nah. <laughs> this is a... April, for me, has been a very uh, unusual month as far as work is concerned. And I'm ready to... Uh, I, think, I think next month will be a lot less crazy in comparison. <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's hope so. But yeah, we have such a fun set of chapters. This this action packed <laughs> man. It brought back so many memories of like me just loving this section, and I forgot how much I love this section. I thought I loved yeah. this section for the stuff that comes in the next set of chapters that we're going to be talking yeah. about. But no, I think in retrospect, we'll have to see. But I think this is better than those later chapters. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I I remembered what happened here, sort of in like a. Like a like a Wikipedia summary kind of like oh this happens like there wasn't anything that was like oh yeah okay but it was just like oh, I forgot how cool it is in context it is some of the <laughs> coolest stuff we've seen so far I love it to death and you know what let's just get right into it we we have to get the proper setup for this because we're in, oh, yeah. into chapter one hundred and six the town of welcome where well of course we got our title page here where Helmeppo has successfully swam back to the boat. Yeah, he, he swam back. Yeah, he, uh, he he worked for it. He had he was uh, working hard. Kobe's right there to greet him. It's like, oh, they're, they 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 do seem like proper friends now. So that's that's, yeah, oh, that's they, cool. They, they care. That's that's fun. The triumphant return of Helmeppo. Yeah, we'll see how it goes from here. But I, wasn't Buggy only like twenty volumes? <laughs> Yeah, that or even less. I don't remember him being too long. This one definitely seems a lot more involved than Buggy. Yeah, it, it's longer, and I feel I feel like less stuff happens in like in between each one. Yeah, it it feels like because there's it, less happens, but there's also more story set up. With Buggy, you're just like, here's this crazy thing he's into. Right, it was like some crazy stuff was happening every time. Yeah. <laughs> every time we checked in on Buggy, it was just <laughs> complete chaos. Mm-hmm. This one's more. I am trying to tell a story involving character development and to convey yeah, that without yeah. any words is definitely takes a bit more time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. First of all, we got our proper introduction to the Grand Line now that we're sa- sailing on it. And I love this introduction to just how insane this place is because yeah. it's it's winter. It's it's snowing for them as they're sailing through, which is just a wild visual. And <laughs> Luffy built a snowman and, and Usopp built like a... Uh, his, his the soul the snow queen he calls it <laughs> who obviously i mean it maybe it's kaya, just yeah yeah it's obviously kaya but it also could just be oda's depictions of all females in this in this manga i'm willing to believe like, i think i think it's close enough yeah <laughs> that it could probably be kaya uh, but then like luffy just i i can't quite tell what happens but he like like punches the the, the wooded arm stick of a snowman, yeah, to launch it right into it. <laughs> the snowman punch knocks the head clean off. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, oh man, we, we we talked about this before, but I love these like little scenes of just everybody messing around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because Usopp, instead of retaliating against Luffy, he kicks Mister Snowman. It was, honestly hurts Luffy <laughs> even more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nami's inside, just like how can they just play like that in the snow? And they're not really. Wo- wearing anything warm so yeah. i'm impressed i also love that again sanji's just completely wrapped around her finger is like how long shall i keep snuffling snow until it stops <laughs> <laughs> well i i love I, I just i love how he's so just over the top about it and yeah she's just like yeah keep going whatever <laughs> <laughs> it's so just laissez-faire is like yeah yeah i got i got you, you just yeah just yeah, do yeah. this thing <laughs> <laughs> And then we get the complete opposite where Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday are just like, hey, like don't you have a heater? <laughs> like, I'm cold. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, get out there and shovel with them. You, you're you not guests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's when it starts thundering. And she's like, what is with this weather? And hmm. they finally, like the two of them, 
you know, Mr. Nine, uh, Miss Wednesday were like, yeah, you're underestimating the Grand Line. You've been hardly steering. And she's like, I just checked it. It's like, what? We're going in the complete opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> This is a weird comparison, but like I, I feel, I sort of feel this trying to navigate like a larger city because uh, I live in a small town. So anytime I'm like, oh, I have to go to a big city, and I'm trying to follow like a map or a GPS, and I'm just like, I, I got turned around. <laughs> How? Exactly. How? It sort of feels like this. <laughs> On the same way, I, I fortunately, the uh, city I most walked around in was New York, and that's so grid based it's hard to get lost but i remember around e3 time walking around la and being like i have no idea where i'm going yeah yeah same it is it <laughs> is LA just was another one i got lost in so yeah yeah I, I get it but this whole like next set of pages that we get where <laughs> we get miss wednesday mocking her it's like are you sure you're a navigator like testing that pride <laughs> yep it's like on the Grand Line, you can't trust the wind, the sky, the waves, or even the clouds. Mm. Everything is treacherous. The only thing you can count on is the log pose. And she's just like, oh, stop acting like this and get out there and help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do I do want to point out, like, I really like between this and when they like were first getting to the Grand Line, or it was like once they had made it in, it, it's kind of like Nami is sort of having to learn this on the fly. So she's she's making mistakes, and those mistakes are sort of like teaching us the reader. To be like, hey, like none of this makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and and here we have like Nami trying to having to like sort of course, literally course correct on the fly. I think is is a really cool way to uh, set this up. We know how good of a navigator she is. The fact that she's being challenged this much it shows the the, the treachery of it all, and mm-hmm. the fact that she has to stay on top of things so much really does show it. Yeah. Uh, that said, I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say this, but. I don't remember them ever having this much trouble again. Now, it could be all, of, no. of course, Nami's gotten used to it and knows how to navigate mm. them and they're all set to go, but I don't remember things being this chaotic ever again. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not this chaotic, but there are definitely, like, the sea every now and again. And I feel like it's normally like a transitional piece between arcs where it's like, okay, we have to go from one island to the next. And there's like a chapter or two of like, hey, this really weird, bonkers thing happened. And then we, 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 overcome that challenge and we're there mm-hmm. yeah uh but but this it's it, it's straight up like half the chat like, like pretty much the whole chapter or like half the chapter of everybody like freaking out trying to like oh my god what is happening uh-huh and then we get poor mary taking on on even more damage where they scraped an iceberg and have to stop the yeah. water in the bilge and <laughs> who stops rushing off oh and zoro was asleep this whole time oh yeah zoro was <laughs> sleeping the entire time snow building up on him Saji's like cooking rice balls for them to keep their strength up and mm. everybody's completely wiped out after it gets calm and he's like wow what a peaceful nap it's like uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful day shouldn't you guys be working and everybody's just ready to everybody's kill them pissed off <laughs> yeah it's great <laughs> Uh, and Nami even just like bonks him for it, just like slept through everything. <laughs> yeah, she is not happy. But I I love how she does it while he's in the middle of kind of taunting Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, hmm, you two look like you're up to something. What did you say your names were? That's right. They've been stuck in my head. I've heard him somewhere before, or maybe not. Which like is, he's taunting them. Yeah. But he actually is on to something as we later see. <laughs> Yeah, that's some good foreshadowing. that I didn't pick up on that the first time. Yeah, it's it's like, I, I don't know, it's such a good moment. It's also like, I, I love the, the weirdness, of, well, not the weirdness, but the interaction between Nami and Zora, where she smacks him once. He's like, what? He's like ready to fight her, and she just bonks him again. And he's just like, oh my Yeah. God. <laughs> She's in charge. Yeah. She is in charge. No, Make no yeah. doubt about it. <laughs> it's definitely a dynamic um that is really a big part of this era of one piece to me <laughs> i guess like, yeah since since nami is basically the only one with a brain cell currently on, on the crew she kind of has to do everything pretty much and actually this this page here it gives me an opportunity to talk about something i completely missed before a subtle thing that oda did that we didn't even notice and i only noticed it because i was like now that i've i've started reading these these again i'm not i've not watched them all of course because i want to stay uh, surprised by any details i might have missed but i watched the first two totally not mark yeah episodes where he's experiencing one piece for the first time and i was looking at the panels and i noticed that usopp had goggles that he had to pull down and put over his eyes like both of them at once but ever since he left uh log town he has these other ones that he pointedly used where he's able to lower them individually 
he, yeah, he got new equipment t- in Logtown and we never even noticed. It's just like he yeah. now has them. <laughs> that sounds like something that the, the anime would have made an episode about since I know that they, they expanded probably stuff. did. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 now, if we, w- once you pointed it out, I'm like, oh, I totally see the like the change in design is new. But like, I don't to my knowledge, Oda never even made. We only like, saw him buying eggs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he never was like, "Hey guys, I bought new goggles." You know, not even like in the background or anything. Yeah. So it's, it's... I wonder if um that might come up in the SBS at some point, since you know, of course the the things that the readers point out are behind the story content. Right. It, I can see that happen. We'll have to see if that pops up. Either way, we finally arrive at Whiskey Peak, an island of giant cactuses. So of course, I, I remember. Whiskey Peak as a location, and I remember the events that happened. I've completely forgot about the cactuses. <laughs> I was yeah. like, wait, is that it? Yeah, and then, huh? There you go. As soon as they arrive, Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday jump off the side of the ship and is like, well, <laughs> see the you again, closing, fate willing. Bye-bye, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just gone. Yep. And I, I like the sort of ominous things, like it's the fog setting in, they have to sail inland. Mm -hmm. Usopp's immediately worried about their hope there's no monsters and Nami's giving the nice reminder of like hey we have to log the magnetic field we cannot move on until it's logged yep so it's like and yeah it might take a few hours could take a few days all depends on what the story decides (laughs) Mm -hmm. basically I feel like they don't even bring it up after after a while (laughs) they're just like all right we're because I guess the assumption is we've already been here long enough anyway yeah Exactly. It's like it, it's it's happened. You don't need to really worry about it. And I, I love this swerve. You, you just don't expect. It. It's like the the people on the island. All of a sudden, it's like is that a pirate ship? I, I you hear people talking. It's like alert to town. Pirates! Pirates are here. Hey, yep. welcome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone. It, it, it's oh man. This introduction to this segment to me has such a like classic jrpg vibe almost (laughs) of like reaching and reaching a new town and you think it's one thing and then you're just like oh everybody's like (laughs) everyone's like hey and then uh, as we see of course there's like a twist to it and and i feel like the the twist on the twist to me in particular feels like a sort of like an old school jrpg adventuring kind of thing yeah i can i can see that and just immediately like Usopp will suck up any kind of attention, of course. Oh yeah, Sanji, of course. <laughs> Sanji's like, "Hey, women!" <laughs> yeah, he Obviously, sees the women. Weirdly, um, because in, in that panel after he says there are a lot of cute girls here too, like those those two characters show up again. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, so that's that, that's cool uh, detail on his part. They they he kind of kept track of, yeah, that's of it like all. The nun lady and the kid with the sword. And then we get get to meet the mayor, Igarapoi, mm-hmm. and his whole. I, big, I love his the design. Hair. That it's so good. The curls, it's so ridiculous. And the, the he's holding with this weird messed up saxophone. <laughs> yeah. And I, he even has this whole thing. It's like, er, me, 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 me. My name is Igrapoi. Just, I don't know. There's something immediately like weird, but also kind of fun about yeah. him. I, I feel like we're starting to get into the like One Piece characters who have just sort of like these strange speech ticks. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we, we got that somewhat with um, Chu on Arlong's crew, where he, he did, like, the smek thing every other sentence. Mm-hmm. But this one is just, like, a straight up, just like, me, 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 me. Like, it's just so, <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. It's, it's, man, it, it's so cool. And it's, like, immediately long, like, like all right, hey, we have, a, we're proud of our ale. We have an ocean of it. We love to hear tales of your adventures. We pride ourselves on our hospitality. Have a celebration. And all Luffy says is, you curled your hair way too much. Yeah, I love it just in the background. It's uh-huh. just like, I, I, mm, mm. But hey, man, those he spends hours on those curls. Another nice detail that I don't think I picked up on right away. Sanji, Usopp, and uh, Luffy, of course, are just all for it right off the bat. Yeah. But Nami and Zoro immediately holding back. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, very suspicious poses. And it doesn't seem to mean anything other uh, at the time because they join in the celebrations as we'll see in next chapter. But here yeah. it's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, which is kind of a cool, I don't know if I'd go as far as to call it like foreshadowing, but it is sort of like, a, okay, these are these are the two characters who kind of are like, ah, maybe something a little suspicious. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. They are the two smartest ones on the boat. <laughs> 
Yeah, that and uh, man, it, it was immediately suspicious to me when Nami asks Igor Rapoy, like, how, how long will it take to log this? And he's like, ah, don't worry about that. Oh, yeah. As soon as they're like, yeah. hey, here's this important <laughs> thing I need to know. Oh, don't worry about it. That is a red like, flag for these types of stories. Red flag. <laughs> I was like, oh, that is not good. And, it, and, you know, we got the unluckies right there at the end. It's like, yeah, yeah that's a bad mm-hmm. sign as well. Oh, boy. Love the black sun, though. I don't know why. It just mm-hmm. looks cool. Yeah, those look really cool. Yeah, what what a cool setting. Like, 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 Whiskey Peak is such a cool setting for, like, how little of the story it takes place here. It, it's just interesting enough for what it, it what it's all about. Yeah. Right? I think that's what works best about it. Mm. So, yeah, I got our introduction to Whiskey Peak and then got our next chapter, 107, Moonlight and Tombstones. And... The style of display here is amazing. (laughs) I love, like, Usopp holding this illustration that says, don't funk. (laughs) Yeah. I, honestly, who would have guessed that out of all the characters in this this image, Usopp's the coolest. Yeah, right? Like, Like, he's got got his hair down. He looks good. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, he's got the, he's got the drip. I respect it. Yeah, that is, that is, that is a, um. Yeah, that's just the drip, as you say. I can't even put it anywhere way else. It's just yeah. like, damn. Well, which is a strong contrast to how the chapter actually starts. <laughs> that is true with him just completely drunk. <laughs> it's like, yep. And I, I love this. I said in a very cool way, hey, you sea monsters, get your flippers off my friends. <laughs> I think this might be the only time in the entire manga where you, where you have a line of women going, Captain Usopp is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then just I'm willing to put money on that. I got these drinking competitions where uh, yeah. Zoro drank 10 men under the table ten. and Nami's out drank uh, 12. 12. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> Luffy down here, he, he's uh, very clearly expanded. <laughs> he, he he ate the cook under he, the table. Yeah, he ate the <laughs> cook under the, the table where he's eaten enough food for 20, wanting more. And this one is flirting, you know, Sanji's flirting with 20 girls at once. <laughs> how? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It really is. And it, uh, they, they know how to party. <laughs> they yeah. definitely know how to party. <laughs> And I, I love, again, this love, this subtle, subtle thing here is like, like at the, the, the laughing going through is like, I'm so pleased you're having fun from Eager Rapoi. And it mm. just has him behind the head going, indeed. <laughs> oh, ominous. Good, ominous tense, tension right there. But then we go back to um, Mr. Nine and Miss uh, Wednesday. You're trying to get back in the boss's good graces. Uh, yeah. Explain, like we, we failed to get food, but we got this group to come to uh, Cactus Island. So, you know, we're good there. And apparently they have a whole mailbox dedicated to the unlucky. Yeah. Where we get the indicate. We, all we see is the, a symbol and Baroque. Yeah. Hmm. We'll have to see what that's all about. I, I, t- I find it interesting that because... The whole reason they got in trouble in the first place was that they were late, basically, right? <laughs> or that, and they they failed to procure food for our town. But they're like, uh, we we got this like random ragtag group of pirates. Um, that you know they don't know that they're anything special at this point. So it's like, wait, is that sort of like supposed to? No, okay, right, sure, sure. I guess we can rob them, but with how much these guys are partying. Yeah, they're yeah. already low on food, and Luffy just ate enough to take out three cooks. Three cooks. <laughs> yeah. So we could we could assume by that math that he probably ate enough food for sixty people. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> so uh, he looks big enough for it because my God, G- good lord! And he and he stays like that the whole time. <laughs> uh, yeah, he does. He is just that big. I love that his feet are even so fat now that they're bursting at the sandals. <laughs> That's such a good detail. Uh. And Zoro taps out after besting 13 people. Nami's on her 15th. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This whole thing. Yeah, I love Sanji. This is paradise. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody's having a great time. And eventually they all passed out. And I I love this this line from Igarapoi. Tonight the cactus rocks seem to dance so beautifully in the moonlight. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's, it's it just has this real ominous feeling, and that's when we learn from Mister Nine and Mister Eight, uh, Miss uh, Wednesday, that mm-hmm. Igarapoi is actually Mister Eight. Oh, ho, ho. I think uh, pretty obvious that this was kind of like ah, this guy's probably up to no good. So I'm glad that we we spent 
maybe like five pages total building up that suspense <laughs> yeah it, it's just enough to like set uh, set it up it's like we're not gonna yeah. belabor this okay, point yeah. so he's he's in on it i i did completely forget that miss monday here was the sister yeah yeah me too and i love how she's like i was just only drinking carbonated barley tea and i'm still <laughs> how did nobody notice yeah and she even points out it's like we should have just killed him at the port there's a food shortage and no wheel mate is heading this way so you know what that's a good point <laughs> <laughs> but hey mr eight there to point out like hey luffy's worth 30 million and yeah. which is a, <laughs> it's like oops yeah which apparently is even a big deal in the grand line yeah yeah Probably for, um, I, I guess, maybe this close to the entrance. <laughs> yeah, that's, that makes it's sense. It's enough for them to go like, 30 million? I guess it's interesting. I guess he is known to be like a 30 million bounty, but nobody knows why at this point. Like, I, I don't, like, Luffy doesn't, I don't think he has a reputation for being, like, specifically the guy who brought down Arlong or anything. Right. It's just like, hey, he has a bounty. Who cares why? Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I do like this little little world building thing because it always says dead or alive but yep. as uh mr eight here says if we have to kill them their value drops by 30 percent. the government wants to execute them publicly that's that's a good detail did that i don't know if that ever comes up ever again <laughs> probably not <laughs> yeah uh, given that i don't think anyone's ever had like a bounty actually turned in at uh, uh, spoilers i guess sorry but <laughs> eh, i mean zoro has kind of stopped his bounty hunting days so it makes sense yeah, exactly. I, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody, like, actually cash in on uh, one of these bounties. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of Zoro, I love this. Like, yeah. He's just hanging out at the top. Is like, hey, could you just let them sleep a while longer? They're tired. That shot of Zoro in shadow in front of, the like, the moon is so good. Oh, it's gorgeous. And yeah, it's like a true, true sw swordsman. Yep. yep. Never drinks himself into a stupor. <laughs> he just like you know, this is this is it here we go <laughs> yeah he just immediately knew what he was in for is like ah a den of bounty hunters can be a dangerous place you trick pirates into celebrating their passage and yep. it looks to be about a hundred of them and he even says i'll take you on broke works oh so he knows uh -huh. he's in he's he's known this he all knows time. because he got approached to them approached by them while he was a bounty hunter it's such a cool use of his like past yes i love that and it, it gives us just enough details where it's like i turned you down there's total secrecy you use code names even even the identity of the boss and his whereabouts are a mystery yep they're like oh my god he actually knows this stuff he has to <laughs> yeah, die like, oops yeah <laughs> and i i love that line like one more tombstone must adorn the cactus rocks and then you get that zoom in on the cactus rocks where it turns out it's all just graves that's so oh, it's so badass like it's such a it's such a random thing it is so badass <laughs> like, but it has this halloween flavor to it it's just like yeah oh god that is awesome i also love yep. that the the name that we get from that one tomb tombstone is just mr sacrifice Mr. S oh, I well, wonder what happened there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and then, of course, just like the sort of Zoro goes straight in with the like teleports behind you too fast for the human eye. <laughs> Nobody mm. notices that he's gone from uh, the the perch and he's like in the middle of the crowd now, looking like uh, looking with everybody else as they're searching around for him, and they all spot yeah. him in the middle. <laughs> and then they does the whole fast thing, so they shoot each other. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then he, sh oh, he Zoro shows up, has his sword like cutting through like one of Mister Eight's like hair curls. Uh -huh. and he's like, wouldn't you prefer a dozen new tombstones? And he's he's just got he's just a one liner machine at this point. <laughs> oh gosh, and he's like telling the other bounty hunters, "Don't shoot me as well." And he's and he he's like, "Okay, we can't let this happen." And he uses his sacks to send out like a shotgun wave taking out all the guys that were going to shoot him <laughs> yeah, this one confused me like i couldn't quite understand what was happening visually until he did it like a like one or two more times yeah but yeah the fact that like the, the, the saxophone is a gun <laughs> <laughs> it's so good it's just like oh man and they're just all it is is like like all right it's beginning like we've got Mr. Nine, Mr. Eight, Miss Wednesday, Miss Monday, ready to go, along yeah. with all the these hundred bounty hunters after Zoro. What a cool freaking setup, <laughs> right? It is so good. Ah, uh, and that brings us to chapter one hundred and eight, 
100 bounty hunters. Oh, boy. And no need to focus too much on Kobe and Helmet, but once again, not a lot of stuff is, is happening. Basically yeah, just, just asking for forgiveness from Garp. <laughs> and like, apparently all the other Marines are say, saying the same because yep. their heads are bowed. I guess because, like, hey, sorry for not removing the axe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, no, there's no need to go into it. No need man, to go yeah, into what, it. A little, a little dumb. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely a bit dumb. But, uh, yeah, we get this. Again, overhead shot of Whiskey Peak. Everybody, all the bounty hunters lined up is like, all right, does he really think he can take us all by himself? And <laughs> just like, all right, we can't, we can't do this. And I, I love that, you know, you get to see everybody passed out. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, the, in the room. I, and, I didn't notice Sanji just like splayed out arms wide after the first time <laughs> yeah. I read it. It's so good. And I, I love this, like, the whole reason behind it is like, oh, cool. It's a chance to show off my new swords, which yeah, we haven't gotten to see before. Which is sort of like, because that ends up being like kind of the driving context of this whole chapter of, of Zoro kind of like, oh, hey, like this one, this is how this one works. Or like, okay, this one's got like a kind of an attitude to it. Yeah, it, it's great. And again, the choreography here I love because the bounty hunter appearing ahead of him and he's just quick enough that he can slide back through a window to avoid the shot roll into where other people are waiting get behind a table to block their shots this whole sequence feels like a western <laughs> oh it really does it's like a lone swordsman yeah. versus a western town and just Zoro using the using the table for cover and apparently yubashiri is a good sword nice and light and he's just mm. smiling the entire time. <laughs> yeah. At, at this point, yeah, he's not really, like, scared or... <laughs> no. Zoro's in control this entire... This, Absolutely. Like, part of the fight scene. They, they can definitely catch him off guard, like, when they fire a bazooka at him or a cannonball yeah. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but I love how that background detail is... They, he's mainly making them all take themselves out. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and then we got Miss Monday doing her best Donkey Kong impression. Yep. <laughs> throwing, throwing a barrel at him that he cuts in, cuts into four to hit all the guys behind him. And he just complains about wasting it's so the, the, the specific. Whisk. He's styling on them with one sword. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh man. And then I, I really, I really liked this part because like some random goon who like comes at him with like a a stone mallet, and then Zoro's like. Like, uh, Kitetsu the Third is a great edge, but, like, a legendary sword should only cut what its master wants to. And so it's, like, this one is sort of introducing the fact that this, like, because that's, like, the cursed sword. Yeah. <laughs> He's just kind of like, hey, buddy, you've got kind of a mind of your own. It's showing how he has to keep it in control. And I don't know how yeah. often that comes up, but it's also one of those things where it's just cool. It's like, all right, I got to adjust for this because this thing really has some bloodthirsty uh, aspects yeah. to it. <laughs> and then we get this kid <laughs> trying to come at him with a knife that he just gets scared by as soon as Zoro knocks it away with his other sword. Yeah, I feel like he just sort of effortlessly like bonks it. <laughs> yeah, and then that uh, the mother and the the, the kid show up and <laughs> try to trick him with gas in the crucifix <laughs> that he just gets around. And I love yeah, that. Use that sorry trick on someone you. with a kinder heart. <laughs> he just See, but hey, he used the back of the blade. So yeah, he, he did. <laughs> he knocked them out. Oh, God, it's just so fun. And they have this whole, yeah. like, almost Resident Evil 4 section where he's climbing up the ladder, they're coming up after him. He's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, hey, I can just send it off. <laughs> yeah, this... Oh, you were right that, like, the choreography in this section is really great. Oh, and it, I it love feels like it. It's like Zoro is like properly taking advantage of the uh, of the like ar arena, basically, mm -hmm. and so you've got all of these cool sequences. Before you started recording, it's like, oh, hey, it's a Muso. Yeah, yeah, it really feels like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a Muso where you get to kind of travel around and just fight all these guys, and it, 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 it's yeah. great. And honestly, these panels just feel like perfect setups. Like the anime team probably only had to just like line yeah. these up and like okay we just need to fill in the in-betweens because this is like perfect <laughs> yeah yeah like the, the the choreography feels like so much more confident mm -hmm. i guess if i had to put it in a word like, I, I don't know and just the the, the bit where zora like he pushed off the ladder and then he's like jumps on it leaps off of it to go to the next the other building on the other side uh -huh. and just that panel of him like leaping in front of the moon it's like it's just ah uh, it's, so, it's good. so good then we get to see his hawk wave to take out another group and he's yep. just sort of hearing 
you know, everybody yelling at him and he just has this simple like cut around in a circle around him, walks away and they just all fall in the hole. <laughs> I love that kind of stuff. It's just the yeah. pure confidence. But then oh, he's man. finally approached by Miss Monday who swings a ladder at him that he uh, is able to dodge and she just has brain plain old brass knuckles i love that her yeah, movie is just, just called like, superhuman brass knuckles brass knuckles like we've had all these all these character gimmicks mr eight can like he has a shotgun uh saxophone this is like nah she's just like i'm just gonna punch you in the face yeah but then the like the shock waves going through the ground is so freaking cool oh yeah the the cracks yeah. beneath it like it looks like a hard <laughs> hit yeah and then all of a sudden he just grabs a hold of her face and I, squeezes I just, I, until she passes out that panel like i just because miss monday or yeah is like very like muscular mm-hmm. <laughs> just huge and just the visual of zoro just like like him in his tiny arms like eh, you think you're strong want to see who's stronger <laughs> <laughs> like uh it, it's <laughs> just a little bit of bloody of bloody forehead and that's it yeah look at his blood uh, <laughs> on the next page <laughs> and i i love moments like this it's like ah it's all clear to me the the the, the marines got it wrong this guy <laughs> is the one that's actually worth the 30 million berries he must be the real captain <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then you think about it, i was like no no <laughs> yeah I, I i love it that like it seemed weird that a good nature kid like like luffy would be worth 30 million <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is beautiful. What a great, one of my favorite chapters so far. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want to just pure fun action. Like, you know, obviously Zora's not going to lose, but the choreography makes it so Ugh, fun. That's great. It's just fun. Yeah, it's just so fun. I can't wait, Um, because, like, God, if that's what, like, the rest of the arc is going to be like, like, just, ah, oh, man, I, I completely mm. forgot that it was just, like, it really feels like Oda is like trying to level up his fights. <laughs> yeah, it, there it's every it's like he hit this point of confidence all of a sudden, yep. like up to this point, and he's like ready to unleash. Yep, and we're we're definitely getting to see the results of that. And oh man, I'm just uh, it kind of makes me want to rewatch the episode. <laughs> yeah, me too. But uh, yeah, we're up to chapter 109, a question of duty. Where Kobe and Helmeppo are just uh, still in the middle of apologizing, saying we're so useless. <laughs> and okay, <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, sure. Uh, as you said, slower pace because it's like okay, it's we don't have dialogue, so we have to just use this to just emphasize. Like, I, I feel like we sort of didn't even need this one. Like we we know. I mean, it shows that like okay, yeah, they've. They've got a long way to go, but I feel like them them apologizing in the last one was sort of like, okay, we, we got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely agree. Oh, well. Oh, well. We start the chapter with basically all the bounty hunters completely laid out except for... That our... visual of just... <laughs> Just the the three remaining ones and just like the shadow of Zora on top of a building. <laughs> like, while, while just the, the pile of unconscious bounty hunters. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's great. And yeah. uh, the, the, it's like, all right, it's the three of us versus him. Let's do this. Yep. And that again, that shotgun blast, that Igarapa. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, he shouts his own name as he, as he fires. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. But I also love this. It's like, all right, time for to see what Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday could do. And yeah. Mr. Nine bounds off and Miss Wednesday calls her bird, Karu. Who is just perfect comedic release? It's just like we get yeah, this like yeah. powerful quack, and it's like, don't just wag your tail, move it. <laughs> and yeah. she... It felt it felt like after after like all all the just complete like butt whooping last chapter. It's like okay, time time for the gags to come in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it sort of I, like the the visual of Miss Wednesday on on the duck on Karu. Like I feel like that's actually really cool, but then it just like you just. Karu is not very obedient. <laughs> no, he just sits. <laughs> yeah. Apparently he puts us Panthers to shame. <laughs> uh-huh. I love that, like, Miss Wednesday gives up the instructions, and, like, the next panel he quacks, almost like he understood 
what what the directive was, and then he just does a completely wrong thing. <laughs> and I completely missed it the first time, but she smacks him in the back of the head. Just yeah. Just another little quack. <laughs> That's great. Oh, God, I love it. Then we get to see what uh, Mr. Nine can do, because apparently he's a, a bit of an acrobat as he yeah. uses his bat to like go down the side of the church and yeah. to use his hot-blooded bat of guts. It's a interesting name and yeah i feel like it's interesting that it's we have like a baseball bat clashing against the katana and he thinks the baseball bat is better (laughs) yeah (laughs) and i I love that it's what a weird set of uh panels for that he lands he does a taunt where zoro almost seems like he's sheathing his sword but as soon as he says too scared he just like apparently just (laughs) teleports in front of him almost stabs him yeah in the face. he just thrusts and he's yeah. just like trying to trying to dodge and now you know zoro's got him on the back foot yeah no it seems like all he's doing is just moving the sword very quickly forward and yeah it's keeping yeah. him all it guard jou- jousting <laughs> but it's also enough that he keeps pushing him back that he falls off the roof <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love that uh, little line it's like isn't there anyone worth fighting around here yeah, it's it's funny that we've sort of had like the build up, like the the bounty hunters have almost given him more, more trouble than these two goofballs. Although I will say, it seems like Miss Wednesday is the one that kind of affects him the most. Yeah, where her outfit is actually does have a point. The enchanting vertigo dance that does yeah put him on his knees. The the visual of her like like trying to dance while standing on top of a giant duck. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so silly. It really is. But well, I love that it works. <laughs> yeah, it does. And then we get the her peacock slasher, which she specifically pulls out of the breastplate of her shirt. I don't. I. I yeah. Okay. It seems like a bad place to hold a sharp weapon, but uh, I, I do love the detail that it's like around her pinky because it's, so, it's sort of like that's what the whole pinky nonsense was for in the last last episode. Hmm. Yeah, it's just the training to do that sort of thing, for, at least for in her case, it seems. Yeah. It's cool. It seems like it's kind of like, like well, well, she might have them. Except Carew just goes the wrong way and they fall he, off the roof. He just misses. <laughs> yeah. like, you're just like, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm embarrassed to fight these guys. <laughs> it's like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> and that just leaves Mr. Eight, who once again tries the shotgun blast, but he gets down through the hole, which, again, nice use of continuity there. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Mr. Nine's back. He's a little ripped up, but he's he's, he's doing all right. <laughs> Landed. He got a nice trick up his sleeve with the second bat, the hide a bat. Yeah. Gets him by the, by the wrist. And, yeah, and it's like, it's a, like all right, got, got like him pinned. It. And hey, even Miss Wednesday got, got a um, hostage in the form of Luffy. She somehow dragged yeah, Luffy just... out and has a, a sword <laughs> to his belly. He's still asleep. Yeah, I was, I was like, just be awake if you're taking a hostage. <laughs> and then we get Mr. Eight's guns in his hair. I love this so much. I completely forgot that he had had this gimmick. I know. <laughs> just, the visual of him, like, it's kind of like tightening his, like, bow tie. <laughs> just to have, like, tied to the gimmick of the like, the guns coming out of his hair is so good. <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> Even better is that apparently it launches some sort of explosive. <laughs> yeah. And all Zoro does to avoid it is pull Mr. Nine into the line Just of get fire. Get over here. <laughs> yep. Blows uh, him uh, up. <laughs> Just taken down by your own technique. Yep. It's just classic. Uh, gotta love it. And then tosses yeah, him and then, and then Zoro, yeah, he tosses them into Miss Wednesday in the duck. And, and that's all it takes because after that, it's like they're, those two are taken down. Mr. Eight tries to get him again, but Zora uses Luffy's belly to catapult up into the roof and slashes <laughs> yeah. across Mr. Eight and takes them all out. What and a cool it. visual. Two chapters to take down an entire town. Are, yeah, Zora, Zoro's just gone like freaking beast mode on all these guys. It's so good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, I just, I can't. The, the sheer amount of ideas we've seen in this one fight is just like. I feel like more than we've seen in most fights up to now. Mm-hmm. Uh, agreed. Agreed. 
We also have the return of the SBS, which nothing too crazy here. The question about Tashigi's glasses, which I don't think that's a big deal. And then the other one is like, pondering a serious matter for the last five years. Why is it that in a manga no one's trousers ever gets ripped during the action scenes? It's like, well, if the character's <laughs> fought naked, wouldn't that be distracting? <laughs> well, I mean... Yeah. Mm, a little bit. I might be spoiling a future SBS section here, but I, th- I think Oda also, he was like... For um, characters with double fruit powers, he's sort of like, well, yeah, te- technically a lot of them, like their powers would actually like destroy their clothes, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, just, just don't, don't think about it. Just go with it. <laughs> yeah, Suspension yeah. of disbelief and all that. And that brings us amazingly to our final chapter, 110, The Night Isn't Over. And man, we could have, we really could have skipped out on that last one and just go. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, they're just apologizing yeah <laughs> five seconds before garp's announcement i guess i guess yeah. they're building tension but yeah i guess but it, it just, it's just reading it reading it all at once i'm just like okay we, we we didn't need this no it's like okay we get we get it we get it yeah yeah get into the chapter itself everybody's down and luffy <laughs> is up. just awake now he's like why am i outside it's like oh my <laughs> stomach hurts oh, i'll take a nap <laughs> whatever yeah oh, what, what a mood <laughs> <laughs> it's just like ah, oh, what the heck and he just Mm. falls right back asleep i also love that we get a little bit of lore about the baroque works from these fleeing Mm -hmm. agents how they say i can't believe four of our top 12 agents just lost to that guy zoro beat four he beat a third of the top 12 Mm -hmm. all by himself oh what a a king i I feel like that's a little off like i think they mean 12 pairs because the unluckies are the 13th member like because we got mr Mm. 13 that might be it too yeah, I, I I think that. So it's like, okay, the, the unluckies are the last. We have 13 agents we've taken down. You know, we don't we haven't seen Mr. 10 or Mr. 11 and their partner. But, mm-hmm. you know, we got nine and eight. And it's like, okay, so the stronger they are, the, the higher the number. Although everybody's mm-hmm. scared of the unluckies. So, yeah, who so, knows how powerful yeah. they are? Yeah. <laughs> what a weird visual of just these... <laughs> This buzzard and this otter in glasses and just completely throwing these guys off. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the fact that they're like some of the scariest. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are the most scared of this. Mm-hmm. And they, hey, we found something that these two are scared of. Yeah. The arrival of Mr. Five and Miss Valentine. Yep. I, I sort of love, like, now that we've gotten into this uh, this organization of Baroque Works, we're sort of, like, slowly getting more and more of the organization. Yeah. It's it's slowly starting to dole it out. Working your way up the ranks, it feels like. Yeah. We, we cut away from them, and <laughs> Zoro just tosses them all into a pile. <laughs> He's like, all right, we're done. All right. <laughs> nice, <laughs> quiet night. Time to drink. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. It's like, maybe it's just me, but I have a funny feeling. And it's like, we see Mr. Ray's like, I'm not dying here. I have a special duty. And he's getting mm-hmm. up. And that's when Mr. Five and, uh, did we have their names? Yeah, Mr. Five and Mr. Valentine. I forgot yeah, we got their names yeah. before because we got them introduced again. Yeah, yeah. And, we got the proper uh, boxes this time. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I got to say, I do love the design of Miss Valentine. I, yeah. Well, I guess more the outfit because it's like a 60s yeah. go-go dancer type thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fun, but her face is like every other woman's face so far. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the, uh, I hope she doesn't take off the, the hat or the earrings. Otherwise, I'll be like, all right, who are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah, they, they definitely, it's like, man, we've uh, stepped up in power if we're going from eight to five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, okay. It's sort of like this. These guys are, uh, they're they're the big deal. Yeah, they, they definitely have an air of confidence that the others do don't even when we first yeah. saw them it's like okay we we yeah. never took mr nine seriously <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I, guess, I guess in that sense like even though i guess mr nine must be up there implying how like big yeah. the organization is that he's he's nine but going from nine to like all the way to five or very or eight to even to five it's just like oh okay the uh sort of the air of mystery is like okay <laughs> yeah you, you kind of intrigued by it and this guy's the real deal we we also get like some dissension in the ranks it's like oh yeah we're not here to help you we came here to uh basically the boss's secret is out and i don't know what his secret is 
But we discovered that agents of a certain monarchy have infiltrated Baroque works. And that's when Mr. Knight's oh, like, I'm not boy. actually king. I'm not yeah. King. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I remember laughing about that last time. Like, he's he's got the crown, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this twist. I, I can only imagine. Like, you think you have this one thing going on. And instead yeah. of something else where we got Mr. Eight here going like, oh, God, my cover is blown. I'm finished. Yeah, so we're like, oh, so he <laughs> sort yeah. of Oda playing with the reader's expectations. Like, you think it's this? It's actually that. No, oh, just kidding. It's this. Actually, it's that. It's, thir- it's, it's so that good. third swerve. It's like, oh, these guys love pirates. Oh no, they're actually bounty hunters. Oh no, within these bounty hunters uh, and secret organization is apparently some dissenters. Where hey, turns out Mister Eight is part of that. And yeah. the interesting dialogue here is like, I won't let you touch her, and he sends off that the cannonballs from his hair, his hair guns. Yeah. And he even says, on my honor as a command as commander of the Royal Guard of the Kingdom of, Al- of Alabasta. It's like we're getting things, this. Things real... are getting complicated. <laughs> and then, of course, we get the not, won't let you touch her. And yep. we can kind of figure out who he's protecting because uh, Miss Wednesday here says Igarim, which we get a note saying it's his true name. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. I, I think by this point, it's clear Igarim and Miss Wednesday are kind of like, all right, something's up here. <laughs> yeah. I also love just the visual metaphor here of Miss um, Valentine breaking the hair tie. Oh, Miss yeah, Wednesday. That's what she did. Ah, I didn't notice that at first. Yeah, she, she kicks her yeah, there and breaks down. the hair tie, which, hey, yep. your cover's blown. And now that that, yep. that, that symbolism of it is, is gone. Miss Wednesday here is paying attention to what's going on. And all of a sudden, uh, Igram, <laughs> we, we keep changes. We've changed his name so many times in these five chapters. Yeah. <laughs> but all of a sudden, Igram just gets he's blown Mr. up. He's Igram. Yeah, he's just down, down for the count. And we find out the enemy agents are Igram, commander of that royal guard, and mm-hmm. the princess of Alabasta, Nefeltari Vivi. So there's oh, Miss Wednesday's boy. actual name. Yeah. <laughs> what I love, <laughs> Mr. Nine's like, you're a princess? <laughs> so he's bowing as far as he can. Yeah. <laughs> and Zoro's like, all right. Nope. I'm <laughs> out. A, yeah, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> and immediately get the ridiculous of this, of this Mr. Five, who's been cool up to this point, just picking his nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vivi here is ready to go head to head with her peacock slasher but hey mr nine's like i don't know what's going on but you're you're my partner so i'm gonna stall him and uh he, he goes for the attack <laughs> not oh man I, I don't care about you mr nine but you you, you did good <laughs> you did good you weren't effective in the slightest because we got the uh re- revelation that mr five here's boogers are explosive <laughs> yeah which is just oh, okay yep <laughs> I, I feel like on some level in in One Piece, if you if you're like an are an outwardly cool character, your power has to be really stupid. <laughs> it really seems that way because he is. <laughs> you're not allowed to be cool. He looks like he's supposed to be cool, and then he yeah. just has that power. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah that's just. <laughs> but yeah, he's <laughs> a- absolutely blasted back, and even Zoro Zoro is like his boogers pack a wallop. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love that he could tell even from that distance this mm-hmm. distance that that's that's that what was what was going on. Yeah, and uh, then we get that moment of Igarim on the ground. It's like, please grant my request. He's like, oh, I don't want to hear it. It's like, no, <laughs> He's like, oh. I can't defeat them. Please protect her for me. And yeah, Vivi's actually successfully escaping on Karu now. Yeah. And uh, the two of them are chasing after her. And he's like, get her to Alabasta. You'll be rewarded. Save her. He's just so desperate. Yeah. And I love this revelation because you've not even thought about it. <laughs> Nami, of course, didn't get drunk under the table. She's there. Yeah. She's ready. It's like, <laughs> hey, just the, we'll the do mission it for a of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 caught, I got completely caught off guard by that one. I, I didn't re- remember that, like, this was this is where Nami kind of came in to play her role. Yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, she's she's up. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, one of her coolest panels. I I want to say, yeah, just oh that yeah, confident. Ah, oh, so good. it makes me immediately want more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it was like, <sighs> damn it, <laughs> I want to see the rest. That was, we're get, this arc is picking up really fast. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like that is what sort a of start. Like we we just saying the like line. we're in it. Yeah, ground running. Yep, it's it's. In those five chapters, we've gone from, okay, we got these two weirdos with us that were taken to this village that they're saying they're talking about. Okay, the weirdos left, but hey, these guys actually love pirates. Oh, wait, they're actually bounty hunters. We got to fight all those guys while everybody else is dr- drunk. 
And yep. then all of a sudden, like, oh, turns out uh, there's this whole thing called Baroque works. And amongst them, has the, if this apparently Alabasta kingdom has infiltrated them trying to figure something out. Yeah. And they've been their cover's been blown, so now we got to protect this woman that we thought was just silly fodder. Yeah, right. It's just the the way that it sort of like ju- it, it doesn't feel unnatural. It doesn't feel like it's too no. fast, but it just the way we're going from like Oda is just introducing one thing after the next after the next. It just like okay, it feels so exciting. <laughs> yeah, we're just getting nothing's into it. staying the same. Everything's changing constantly, and yeah. I'm sure it'll settle down. But it's it's it's. To me, it has that sort of nice chaos that the Baradier had, while also yeah. having that structure and setup that Arlong had. The, this set of chapters feels like such like a build up that like okay, we know we sort of can have a vibe, like we have a feeling uh, or like a vibe for how Oda is sort of like maturing as a storyteller, and it is sort of like all right, this is all of those elements from previous arcs kind of like stacking on top of each other. Yeah, and. Oh man, we're into such good stuff because <laughs> so Whiskey hype. Peak is not a long arc. <laughs> so. No, it's it's not. But I, I completely forgot how hype it was. Oh yeah, oh, I love it so much. Oh, but man. yeah, with that, I believe we've said all we wanted to say about chapters 106 to 110 of One Piece. Thank you so much for listening, and you can find more of my ramblings and stream VODs over at BitNerd Games on YouTube, or BitNerd with an underscore at the end on Twitter. And Brandon, where can everyone find you at? I'm on Twitter, at Brandon Bovia, just my name. Mm, talking about, you know, all sorts of stuff. Anime, manga games, and my job. Trying to talk more about my job, but trying to figure out things that are interesting to say. <laughs> As always. It's, it's not always there. I, I've, I'm, I'm doing my best to actually kind of Maybe not be as involved with Twitter as much anymore because of things. You know what? That's a that, that's a good point. Yeah, it's it's like I'm I'm monitoring it, but it's also like okay, it's you know what? Yeah. Time to take a little <laughs> step back. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not be so addicted to it. It's like you know what? Uh, yeah, I got other yeah. things to do. But hey, we keep uh, we keep you updated what we're up to at the very least. So definitely check yeah. those out. And mm-hmm. hey, if you'd like to help us out more, you can support the podcast over at patreon.com slash Derek Bittner. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-B-I-T-N-E-R to listen to the next episode three days early. And make sure to return next time as we discuss chapters 111 to 115 of One Piece. Until then, my friends, bye. Remember to take life one piece at a time. And now, Peacock Slasher! Go, Cutter! <laughs> you ran right past him! <laughs> Man, these guys are so pathetic, fighting them is starting to get embarrassing.